Hello and welcome to the I Create Daily Podcast. I'm Leora Alderson. And I'm Devani Alderson. We are the mother-daughter co-founders of the I Create Daily brand. We are passionate about encouraging positivity, creativity, and productivity while bringing you information and resources that support your creative aspirations. I Create Daily is for creators in every genre of creating, from musicians to writers, crafters to inventors, bloggers to entrepreneurs. So if you are into creating anything, this podcast has something for you. So tell us, what would support you most in your journey? You can reach us at creators at iCreateDaily.com. Thank Thank you you for for joining joining us us on this journey. journey. Hello and welcome to today's podcast. This is the iArt Daily Podcast, creative conversations with artists about art. This is our first kickoff episode of this podcast sponsored by iCreateDaily. And we're joined by one of our favorite artists. She's a Finnish fantasy artist from Finland and she does fantasy art. Her name's Eva Nikunen and we've interviewed her a couple times on the I Create Daily Podcast. So we'll link those and you can hear more about her story and her creative journey but today we're doing an art class with Ava about ink art and how she goes through inking her art the tools she uses questions we'll have about her her coloring books that she's created and so do you want to yeah. explain more yeah no that? that's perfect that's a great intro so yeah Ava we're really excited to learn I think you were going to start off well actually yes we did want to ask you just before you get started sharing the art supplies you use you have been doing a lot of art exhibits and shows right uh yeah yeah okay would you like to just give us a summary of what you've been up to in that regard um before you get into sharing about your art supplies and then your art process yeah yeah well this year it started with a solo show uh at a gallery in new york called the haven gallery they did a solo show in january and after that i've been just um the springtime was kind of like preparing for the for the summer shows i do some conventions and art shows so this year I did, um, in August, there was a, a convention in Dublin, in Ireland. Which is yeah. a, it's a famous convention called World, Worldcon, and it's usually in the U.S. So sometimes it travels around the world, and this year it was in Ireland. And since I live in Europe, it was a bit closer to me than to go to yes. the U.S. So yes. uh, I joined that, and they have a, a great art show. And um, it's a possibility for artists to, to sell original art as well as prints and books and stuff. That was awesome. great. Fantastic. Yeah. And also, also did just a few local conventions here in Finland, what we have here. So. Okay. Fantastic. Have you yet done the one where uh, they're featuring like the Finnish legends and myths? I did. It was um, like an art show. Uh, it was, um, I live in the, like the su- Southern part of Finland, which is like the capital. <laughs> so uh, this art show, is, it was kind of like in a small town in the center of Finland, like in a little town in the middle of the forest. So it's a really nice place, but it's, um, they have a, like a music and art festival there. Mm. So they asked me to do some drawings uh, inspired by Finnish uh, mythology. And there's a lot of like um, forest creatures and fantasy stuff in, that, in those stories. So um, uh, the art show was based on that. And actually... <laughs> Um, because I'm always trying to, to figure out how to use my art in as many places as possible. Mm-hmm. The drawings that, that I did for this art show are actually the ones that are going to go into the coloring book that I'm currently working on. Fantastic. I awesome. love that you mentioned that because we have articles on the concept of multipurposing your art. In fact, you're one of the feature artists that we've create, we've um, profiled uh, relative to that and if you create one thing, how it is that you take that one thing and produce it into the many, which is essential really for any professional artist, um, because otherwise you're, you can't just do one painting and leverage that time you have to find, but, but not only is it essential, uh, you know, for the, the growth and survival of your business, but also it's wonderful to be able to take the one thing and turn it into many more versions. Yeah, that's, uh, um, it's essential to do that because, you only have so much time to, to do art and, and draw and paint. And usually it takes a long time to finish a piece. So right. you want to use it in as many things as possible. So that's what yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. And you work with oils a lot and those take a long time to dry. So it takes <laughs> even longer, like acrylics are a quick dry 
thing, but yeah. oils are quite a process. Yeah. yeah. One of the questions. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Now, I was just going to say one of the questions we have for you is about which version of your creations tends to sell the most, but we'll wait and uh, have you answer that question at the end if you want to go ahead first and share about the art supplies that you use. Uh, yeah, so for the, I'm, yeah, I'm working on a coloring book and I'm actually uh, almost done. I, uh, my goal was to do 20 uh, ink drawings and to publish publish it first as a like a pdf coloring book that people can download and then after that i could do it into a physical book so um i'm almost done with that and um, i use a special paper for the coloring book pages because it's ink and there's a really great paper by uh Kanson. it's called uh, i don't know if you can see it. it's illustration paper mm -hmm. and uh it's specifically um meant for like ink drawing and uh, comics and stuff. So it's really good for ink. And uh, the, the pens I use are these uh, Japanese Micron, Micron ink pens. Mm -hmm. So they're like very good combination, just uh, like a recommendation if you want to do your own coloring pages. I think these are really good tools. Yeah, and uh, is the Kansen, the Kansen illustration paper, is what mediums does it support? Is it mainly just for ink? the paper um, it's very it's very thick paper so i think you could use it for a watercolor as well or maybe not for acrylic maybe it's not for that but uh graphite ink watercolor i think would work right even colored pencil okay cool great and is that do you know do you have a weight on the pack does it sh show because they might have different weights does it show oh uh, yeah it packet? does it's uh 200 and 50 grams uh it's 90 90 pounds 90 pounds yeah that's uh, okay awesome yeah yeah they call it uh, let's see the the one here that comes up uh they have a watercolor one as well 90 pounds um is that does that one show multimedia it's illustration paper illustration on the, on the illustration. label okay cool. uh yeah this says uh it's illustration paper it's for manga and comics that's the one that that i'm using for perfect and we'll link all page. We'll link all the tools you mentioned in the yeah. notes. So awesome. yeah. Now, so if you're using that, so you're using that when you're creating individual pages, yes. when you create your coloring book, then how do you work with that? Do you just um, put in the request like for the 90 pound paper to your printer or are you actually using the Kansen paper in your coloring books? Uh, no, I'm just, uh, so when I uh, actually have one uh, original page here, um, this is a finished um, coloring page that I drew this original. So I just, what I do is I just scan this into my computer and then um, I use a program called InDesign to, to design the coloring book. So I just uh, import the scanned images into the InDesign uh, program and then I just make the, the coloring book there. So um, my goal is to, to sell all the original drawings for the, for the coloring book. So there's mm -hmm. like, um, that's a, another way to to use the art to sell the originals and uh, display them in art shows and use them in the coloring book and stuff like that. So yeah, and I could and even do a painting based on this drawing because I drew it and I could use it as inspiration for my next, next piece or something. So definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So when you submit your InDesign illustrations, is it just nor a regular coloring paper or is there a specific kind of paper you use for the coloring um, book? There's different kinds of papers. I, I did uh, my first coloring book back in, I think it was 2016. And um, uh, when I was making that coloring book, I had a few options. Uh, usually uh, a thicker paper is better because people want to use, um, some people want to use watercolor to, to color coloring, like coloring books. So, and not just colored pencils. So uh, a thicker paper, um, I think it's it's better so but that that's something that uh everyone has to kind of uh decide for them, themselves because it's a matter of cost as well right like, yeah so but there are a lot of options of what kind of paper can go into a coloring book so okay awesome. cool. great all right well carry on with your in any other supplies you need to show or have to show um, no it's uh, just those simple supplies i just um 
And uh, I did a short uh, timeless lapse video of this latest ink drawing. And uh, in it, you can kind of see that I do a very light uh, graphite sketch on the paper before I start inking because you can't erase ink once it's down. <laughs> So um, I kind of, uh, especially if there's like a human character, um, I like to do a little light uh, graphite drawing before I start thinking. Well, that's, I mean, that's a really good point because, <laughs> I mean, you can't use white out either, you know, mm -hmm. it, and so it, in a way it's so much more difficult, I would think, to do an ink drawing than a painting because you can cover over, you know, paint oftentimes with another color, right? Yeah, so it's, um, I've actually learned a lot about drawing uh, this year, just doing the coloring book. It's been a, like for me, a, a great ta challenge because usually when I'm drawing, I use graphite and you can just uh, work it. <laughs> um, then you can just uh, erase what you don't wanna see on the paper, but the ink is different. So whatever you put down, it stays on the paper and you can't really get it off anymore. <laughs> Right now, can you edit that though in Illustrator? Yes, you can, but I, I try not to. I, it's kind of um, my thing because I work traditional. I want the, the original piece to be the same that's in the coloring book. But of yeah. course, you could do adjustments in Photoshop and yeah. Right. So then, so, so your goal is to sell the originals uh, that are going into the coloring book. So then how does that work from the paper that you created that you then scan into your computer and um, create a digital version um, through Adobe Illustrator, um, which one becomes your original that you then paint and sell? Uh, well, the, the original drawing is the, the original artwork. So the, the ones that I drew on the Canson paper Okay. Those, those are the ones that um, I usually, if, if I sell them at shows, I will frame this. So it's like a piece of art. And I also, also sell these online and usually then they are not framed because it's uh, a bit cheaper to uh, ship paintings without frames. So. When you sell the original, do you go ahead and paint it yourself or are you selling it as something somebody else can color in if they want? Or just as the um, black and white art. It's yeah. Just, uh, yeah, it's just the, the black art. and white art. Yeah. Cool. So, so now you have the black and white art, the ink art original that you can frame or not and sell as original art. Um, and then you have also that same file that you could what print out and then color as then a painted version. Uh, well, what I would uh, what I would do with this is just uh, when I have the ink drawing here. And uh, if it's something that I would like to paint, uh, then I just use a different medium. I just uh, use the original drawing as an inspiration. And then because uh, when I do color work, it's usually always oil paint. So that's a totally different medium. So I would just use this as an inspiration sketch for the painting. I see. I see. So you wouldn't be like coloring in your own drawing uh, to then sell as a colored version. You would rather no, recreate uh, it. Got yeah. it. Okay, cool. That makes sense. Awesome. Okay. Well, do you want to do the screen share of your video and any commentary that you want to include with that? Uh, yeah, let me see if I can share my screen. Let's see. And for anybody listening to this, we have the video itself on YouTube and you'll want to watch that right. if you can. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, we, we can. can. Okay, great. Uh, so I just, uh, I do these uh, short time-lapse videos. I just uh, record them with my iPhone and uh, they're very simple to do if anyone wants to record their own videos because it's just the uh, uh, iMovie app on the iPhone. Do you, um, so are you using an iPhone stand or um, have it like taped to something above you or how do you have it set up? Um, yeah, I would like to buy, actually I'm in the process of searching for uh, like a, uh, like an arm for the for the iPhone so I can kind of like put it in a better position because now I just have this like straight stand like next to me and it's a bit awkward when it's like it's too close to me and it's kind of like um, it doesn't work that well so I'm actually just kind of looking at, at Amazon to get something better yeah <laughs> but this, this yeah. is what I have right now so great yeah. so it is um 
this is the the newest drawing that I did, and um, I usually draw a border here uh, just to. It's like um, one fourth of an inch, I think you said. <laughs> so, um, inches, uh, Ava, before you continue, yeah. would it would it work for you to expand your screen? Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, we go. Better now. Yeah. Uh, yes. There we okay. Go. So, yeah. okay. So you're doing the border freehand. Uh, I I have a um, I have a light uh, graphite uh, line under. Okay. You can just see it on the video. Okay. So I just yeah. uh, so I'm just inking that in because this is something that you don't have to do, but I I like to do it because I like the the drawing to be inside the frame, so I know like <laughs> what parts of the image I want to draw. So I just Good. draw the frame. Okay, around cool. the image. And that's the way I display them in the coloring book as well. So you can see the frame you're drawing. Okay. Great. And here you can also see that this is the, the graphite drawing that I have. This is not inked yet. So uh, I drew the face with graphite. So I just knew that I wasn't gonna mess it up too bad <laughs> yeah. uh, in the beginning. So um, that's how I started. And that's, uh, now I'm starting to ink the face and the hair and then I kind of like um, I don't have all the lines uh, drawn with the graphite then I just um, start like improvising with the ink because I've already drawn many of these so I still have some light graphite lines here and then I just draw over, the, over them so and uh, now I'm just erasing all the, the graphite lines that I still have on the paper so you can't see them in the final piece I'm okay. just doing some additional details. And uh, for this drawing, the character was the most important part. So I wanted to draw her first to get it, get it right. And after that, I just started sketching the, the background with the graphite pencil. Uh, and so you sketch the background after you establish the most important piece on your, on your art, right? Yeah. So the, the character, I wanted to get her right on the, on the paper and, when I was satisfied that it, it's going to work out, and then I was like, okay, now I can draw the background. So and do you, uh, sorry, sorry. Does your character have a name? Does this, uh, this is the, the Autumn Princess. Lovely. <laughs> because my, uh, my coloring book, the theme is kind of like enchanted uh, seasons. Mm. So it goes from spring to summer, from autumn to winter. So that's kind of the theme of the book. Lovely. Awesome. So it's like an autumn, autumn piece. It's my favorite season. So I'll just autumn princess. <laughs> nice. And yeah. in this, in this particular video, you're doing a speed drawing of a human or elf character. Um, yeah. When you do other things like animals, is like if the out like you've done owls and different birds. Do you also start with that creature? I usually do because. Um, Usually the hardest thing to draw is like the human character or the, if there's animals in the, in the image, I usually want to draw them first because uh, if I drew the whole background and then I made a mistake on the, on the main characters in the piece, I would have lost a lot of time. So yeah. I just, what, I think a um, good idea when you're working with ink is to draw the hardest parts of the drawing first to make sure that you're happy with them and then you can kind of move on to the, to the background or other things in the drawing, so. That makes sense. So uh, I just uh, sketched lightly on the background and my intention was, was to just draw a lot of leaves that people could color in the background. So um, then I just started drawing a lot of leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and it took a few hours to get everything down, but this is kind of like freehand, I'm not so, um, this is like more the more maybe like enjoyable part of the drawing because I'm not so scared to get something wrong because I'm just drawing leaves. So. And you already so are you drawing it from a sketch that you've created previously, or is it uh, all no, from this your head? just freehand, uh, just drawing. Whatever on the I just knew that I was gonna draw some tree branches and some flowers and some leaves. So. And so have you? Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. I yeah. could just draw it like freehand on the, on the paper because Got I it. kind of knew what I was doing. That's awesome. Fantastic. Cool. And then you just fill in whatever details that pop along with the ink 
as you're going. Yeah, and uh, uh, when creating a coloring page, I usually try to think, um, I, I try to keep in mind that this is a page that people will color. So I'm trying to not use too much like straight black. Uh, I do a, a little bit of like shading with the, with the pen. You can see like in the middle of the leaves, it's, it gets a bit darker, but I try not to, to make it too dark so people, people can still color it, so. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a nice balance of giving some darkness for, care, um, for depth and texture yeah. without uh, overdoing it. So yeah, that looks perfect. On the ink pen, yeah. are you using, do you use several different tip sizes for the pen or are you just doing that with one size? Oh yeah, that's a good question. I use the smallest they have, which is, um, um, it's a zero, zero, 003. It's the, the smallest point they have of these micron pins. So it's a very tiny, <laughs> tiny um, pen. And that's the way that I can get all the very tiny details. And did you use that same pen for the character as well? I did, yeah. Okay. Just uh, some of the thicker lines you can see, I just went over the line many times to get it a bit thicker, so. Okay, and you and same thing with the coloring in the shaded areas. Yes, it's just the same pen all okay. the way. They so, do different sizes, but I, I like to use the smallest size. I'm just used to that, and you can get all the all the really tiny details with that same pen. That's what I like. So that's what yeah, I use. and it saves time having to change and decide what other tip to use. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They do a lot of sizes, so maybe people can experiment like what they like to use the, use the most. So, and there's yeah. the finished drawing. Yeah, so. Wow, just beautiful, so incredible. Awesome. Autumn princess, yeah, mm -hmm. love that. So it'll be interesting, do you have, from the coloring books that you've sold, um, have you had people send you uh, examples of their coloring? Uh, yeah, book? I've seen, actually, um, I also have a Patreon um, and uh, I started that last year and what I've been doing is I, I draw a custom coloring page each month for my patrons and uh, that's that's been a lot of fun because I can see the results like how they color then and also sometimes people post on Facebook uh, their colored images so I can see them and I've seen a lot on Instagram uh, actually yeah uh, last year I did um, a book which was uh, not like specifically a coloring book but it was a journal and it was black and white so people have been coloring that as well I actually have them here um, it was called uh, it's a journal called Enchanted Valley mm, yes and, yeah and uh, it's gorgeous if people aren't seeing it um, on the video can you hold it up again so we can uh, oh yeah that's the cover yeah. it's Enchanted Valley and yeah. uh, it's a journal with uh, black and white uh, illustrations in it, and you can color the images and also um, do some journaling. So it has journaling mm -hmm. pages. And mm -hmm. uh, this was actually the, the first edition that I published myself. And now I finally have the publisher version here. <laughs> and uh, it's a bit thicker than the, the one that I published myself. Wow. And what we did was I did uh, five uh, additional drawings and it has a lot more of these like journaling pages. So it's even mm. more like a journal. So fantastic. And, That's awesome. And are yeah. you selling that? Oh, those are not yet available on Amazon US, correct? Uh, not yet. This is just, um, uh, we're just uh, starting this year. So um, this edition was uh, printed in the US and uh, we're waiting for a bigger batch of books to arrive from, uh, from another printer. So um, this uh, summer, uh, the publisher has been selling these at like uh, conventions in the US, which is great for me because I'm stuck here in, yeah. <laughs> in Finland, yeah. so I can't get there very often. So uh, I can only sell these online. So it's been great that she's been selling these at the conventions in, in the US. And Great. Oh, that's uh, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's a good point. So for the US based artists, just appreciate recognize how fortunate we are to have 
you know, the vast resource mm -hmm. of Amazon, yeah. as well as so many shows happening on a regular basis. I know you, Ava, have come to the U.S. for um, programs, for educational uh, conferences, um, as well as for the New York exhibit and that sort of thing. And the different comp uh, conventions that you've been to. Yeah, and of course, there's so much going on in Europe and Europe as well. But even then, for you, a lot of that means travel. I guess it would be a lot like for us traveling to different states, um, but you know, which still can get expensive, especially the, the further the state, often the more expensive the cost. So same thing with you, countrywide. And still traveling with paintings, which is which can be yeah, a lot. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you mentioned yeah. in our last uh, interview we had with you earlier this year, just how much it took for packing your paintings, and that was its own <laughs> stressful it for process. the New York. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's so stressful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, uh, people like. Um, if you're living in the U.S., like uh, you have so many, like if I was there, I would be doing like a show every weekend, just selling my art. <laughs> yeah. So uh, take advantage of the opportunities there. So. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, one of our the artists in our community, Linda Suzanne Wright, has a show just about every weekend from now to the end of the year. She was yeah. saying so. And if you're a low, and if you have have local galleries it might not be big convention shows but there's always something in local art communities happening as well as a lot of fall festivals yeah. this time of year yeah for displaying your art did you have any other uh screenshot things to show us before we go into other questions uh no that was it it was just uh it's um i, I encourage everyone to try who's uh, <laughs> um who wants to do a coloring book it took me actually um a few um took me some tries to get used used to the ink because I hadn't done a lot of inking for a while. So I kind of like had to learn it again. So um, uh, like my first ink drawings, I was, wasn't really happy with them, but I've been just drawing them this year, like so many. So now I'm kind of at this stage where I'm kind of happy with the, with the result and yeah. to, to combine them into the coloring books. That's all. It, that's what it takes. Just lots and lots of, oh, yeah. the, you know, the 10,000 hours, so to speak, kind mm -hmm, of thing. Yeah. You know, and it is interesting. It reminds me of when um, I created the My Trainer Fitness products, which you're familiar with, laminated workouts, um, you know, on index cards. And my original thought was, oh, it'll be easy. It'll be so <laughs> simple. You know, it's just like instead of writing and taping and gluing workouts clipped from magazines onto these index cards that then you take to the gym and they kind of start the ink starts running, you know, as the water bottle or the card gets sweaty you know, like let's create some laminated workouts well then you Whoa. begin to realize that the vision that's simple is not so simple in execution when, relative to how do you make a workout a thorough complete workout very clear in a very small space and then of course you have to laminate it and then you have to hole punch it which hole punching and three ring binders are a lot more expensive than a bound book so similarly and then don't uh, don't forget the cost of having models, models and then on top quotas. of that having somebody to design it in a way that it looks it simple had, that's right that had to, Ooh, exactly so. it was so it took a couple of years to orchestrate just how well, the it product took a year worked. it took a year to but it was so and it was so expensive to produce so similarly relative it's like a, i can imagine and I would have probably had the thought that, oh, create some coloring pages. That's a simple book to do, right? Yeah. That's <laughs> but what then, I thought. I was, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. So, no, I just thought that I, I was going to complete the coloring book in like two months. And it's been like, I don't know, six, seven, seven months. And now yeah. it's finally, <laughs> finally oh finished almost. Yeah. And subsequently, you get faster at each time. So the next book mm -hmm. and the next book, not only are they faster because now you know the materials, the publisher, the printers to go through, but you get more, uh, more skilled and, you know, at knowing what to do and what not to do. So really, that's just what it takes a lot more time. Are you, you know? doing your next coloring book with the same publisher who is re um, publishing your journal? Uh, no, this one is um, just self publishing. Cool. Uh, you never know like uh, what the next step is, but the first step I'm just doing a self-published book. Yeah, awesome. definitely. Mm -hmm. So um, back to some of our questions, a lot of which you have answered here. Um, you So you work from basically your vision and you bring it to life on canvas or paper. Um, and do you has do you also have that same process for the worlds that you're creating? Like, you know, is your envisioning process that you're kind of, 
dreaming these worlds up all the time and maybe making notes about this and that thing? Or is it more like a, a piece by piece process? Uh, yeah, I've thought a lot about that because um, I'm always trying to, uh, because uh, in order to be like su successful as an artist, you kind of have to, um, uh, well, branding is kind of like, I don't know, kind of have to brand yourself, like what is the thing that you're doing? And uh, that's kind of been like a personal struggle, <laughs> struggle for, for me because uh, I always think that I want to do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But actually looking back now, now that I have uh, all the book projects and I have some paintings and stuff, I'm kind of seeing like a similar theme in all of them, even though I didn't kind of plan it. So yeah. that's been a really good thing. I, I think the, I think you should just uh, create a lot of art and then you kind of start to see a uh, reoccurring theme. I usually uh, what I see in my paintings is uh, um, I love historical stuff, like uh, especially like the Victorian age. I actually looked back on the, on the Enchanted Valley journal that I did. Mm -hmm. It's very Victorian and all the people are very, wearing Victorian clothes and stuff. And there's some fantasy, uh, fantasy elements. There are some fairies and stuff here, but that's also like very Victorian. So that's kind of... Um, that's the way I've been building this thing, so. And we gotta mention, because it just happens to be Friday the 13th, you also love the Halloween theme yeah, and the I fall. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. There One second, let's Halloween. pause this. Okay. All right, well, right as we were talking about Friday the 13th, the dog alarm went off. And so, again, we had to just mention, since it was Friday the 13th and Ava loves Halloween and fall season and cooler weather that it's just a fun time to be recording with her on this date yeah. and it's full moon <laughs> yeah right yeah right so um so yeah do you have any plans coming up are you like already planning anything for halloween or you just enjoy getting in the spirit do you actually do things and dress up and all that uh no i don't if i was in the u.s i would go to i would really like to go to some like haunted uh houses or stuff i see like i watch those things on youtube like the haunted hay rides and stuff like that so yeah i would really like to do that maybe someday <laughs> oh so they, that's right they don't, so you don't it's not a finnish holiday right no no it's like um it's like um every year they have something more but it's not very it's not a traditional finnish holiday it's not like in the U.S., so it's totally different here. But people still really love it, and and uh, there's some stuff going on. But I just uh, I just try to enjoy the whole season and uh, yeah, of getting course. a Halloween mood. And yeah. and we and you we can always tell because a lot of your art is. Uh, we can see the seasonal themes like when it's winter you have more of the winter themes going on with your paintings and when it's fall you have more of the pumpkins and all that it's really yeah, fun i really yeah. like seasons as well those those inspire me yeah so yeah. i had a question on sorry there's a fly in my face i had a question when you're putting together your journals your coloring books when you're maybe doing a painting theme anything you do that's thematic uh and a lot of your stuff is when you do series are you starting with a theme in mind or are you creating a collection of work and then seeing what theme sort of comes out through the art and deciding from there uh, it's a little bit of both. Uh, usually, uh, for example, I did uh, my solo show uh, in New York. I, I kind of had a theme. I had a very loose theme. I was kind of thinking like uh, forest creatures, um, uh, fantastical people, and maybe some animal creatures. So it's a very loose theme. But still, like when you're doing a series, you have to have something. And... Uh, I did the, kind of the same thing for for my the Enchanted Valley journal. I just uh, chose three themes that I like, that I'm inspired by, because you have to be ex excited about. If you're going to do a big project like this, this is like over 50 drawings, so it's a lot of work. So yeah. I just picked three themes that I like. It was like this fairy forest, uh, Halloween, and kind of uh, like a carnival theme. So I have three themes themes and I just started drawing from there. Cool. You're mentioning carnival reminded me that uh, Devani and 
her, the rest of the family. I haven't so much have been in watching the Amazon Carnival Row. Is that the name of it? Carnival, yes, Carnival Row. Carnival Row. Have you seen that? Uh, I actually watched the trailer, but I haven't watched the show. So, but I know of it. So. Yeah, I think you'd like it. It's very Victorian steampunk, and it has it has Orlando Bloom, the Legolas guy, in oh, Lord yeah. of the Rings. So <laughs> check it out. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Some, yeah, it sounds like something you would enjoy. It has all yeah. the weird creatures yeah. it's all great yeah. <laughs> so let's just see i'm just going down the question list to see if we've gotten them all um so and you've told us shared this before but the technical side is important i think especially for aspiring artists who are just getting into it uh you mentioned that you scan your um art and and so do you what are you using to scan it and then also do you sometimes photograph it and digitize it that way I do uh, all my drawings. I scan them. I just have a basic like Canon printer that has a scanner as well. So I just use that. And uh, uh, when I do oil paintings, because you can't really uh, scan oil paintings because they reflect light back. So it's very hard. Some people do it, but I, I haven't been successful with that. So I photograph my paintings, my oil paintings. And I just, uh, I have a, uh, Canon camera, uh, DSLR, not anything fancy, it's just a, but still a basic digital camera. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's better to use this than your iPhone because this has like a higher resolution. I try to get the highest re resolution I can with this camera. So, what kind of lighting are you using when you photograph using that? Um, I have a setup, I have um. I have these lights that have the like the daylight bulbs, like mm -hmm. the it's like a colder natural light. Mm -hmm. So that's better for photographing paintings because if you have those yellow lights that you usually have, like for lighting your home, that's not the best light for photographing paintings. So right, just you mentioned you can get those in like any store and they're very cheap. You mentioned that the oils. Um, reflect the light a lot which is why you can't scan it when you do the photographs of your oil paintings are you doing that before you glaze the before you do the final glaze layer yes so oh. i uh the final layer of the oil painting is uh, like a gloss varnish and uh, you have to photograph it before you add the gloss varnish because it, it will make the photographing even more <laughs> difficult because then it's like all these like very glossy surface and you're trying to get get a good, good photograph so it's even harder so i recommend photographing before you add the varnish perfect okay, awesome great. so one of the questions that i know um our audience especially is interested in especially those who are seeking to or are already selling their art or seeking to um so when you sell art which renditions sell the best for you example originals uh poster prints canvas prints um, coloring books, you know, which of those, do you, do you have a sense of that? Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. What I try to do is always uh, um, try to think of as many ways as I can to, to make money from my art. So uh, selling originals is kind of a big thing for me. And usually uh, uh, online, I sell mostly drawings, graphite drawings, uh, some watercolor and the ink drawings as well. Uh, oil paintings are, are a bit harder to sell online because of course they're more expensive and uh, usually people um, who put more money into art want to see the actual painting in person before uh, buying. So uh, galleries I think are a really good thing for that if you want to sell original oil paintings or paintings that are a bit higher priced so, or bigger work. Yeah. and. Uh, and I think conventions as well, um, just find your, like, um, just try to think like where your art would fit. Like for me, I do kind of like this fantasy themed uh, paintings. So they go better in like maybe fantasy conventions or sci-fi or stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so the form then, um, it's, it's sort of like all of it in a way. Yeah, yeah, and I, I do I do prints of my of my work, so uh, I sell those online, and uh, I sell prints at conventions, and uh, 
also the books and everything so right and but then since, since the prints are less expensive then you can probably do more volume but then because they're less expensive they may not bring in you know the revenue might be about equal to originals or books or something is that has that been your yeah experience? and um um with the prints, what I do online is that they're or like they're limited edition. So I just do 25 prints of each painting. And that's something um, I listen to a lot of art podcasts about like selling art. And that was a recommendation that I got that if you do prints online, make them limited because um, prints are very hard to sell, uh, especially if you don't have a huge following like like I don't have like um, trying to grow it all the time, but when you still when you don't have a huge following, prints are a little bit hard to sell. So uh, what I've done is that, that I just do twenty five and kind of creates that like a uh, missing out feeling. Like if you really want the image, then you're maybe more likely to buy it because you know that maybe this won't be available like next year because it's sold out or something. So right, I think that's a good good tip. So that's a, it is a good tip. For me, I always think about, well, that means you can never sell it again. You know, it's like, oh no, you know, that that's like- a Yeah, hunting. there's that, yeah. But I think, um, especially if you're starting, like uh, for me now, I sell a few prints here, a few prints there. Maybe in the future, when I, when there's like more demand on the prints, maybe I could do like bigger prints, more higher priced or, do open edition as well as limited edition. And just, I've seen that as well. Like uh, you can do open edition, which may, it can be like the smaller print or like a, just more basic paper. And then you do uh, limited edition. That's like very nicely printed, like silk screen or something beautiful. And that's like more expensive and those are just limited. So you could do that as well. Right. But I haven't done that yet, but that's an option. How do you ship yours online? When you do online orders, do you ship them rolled in a tube or flat in a larger, like? Um, I ship them flat just because um, I don't sell big prints at the moment. I just sell, sell small prints. So those go very well in just like cardboard um, envelopes that I have. And uh, it's a convenient way to just ship them. But yeah. if you have large prints, I would recommend rolling them up in a cardboard tube. Do you, you have some uh, customers ask you to ship them framed? Uh, no, I, I have shipped original paintings in frames, but uh, not prints. Prints are not framed. Yeah. Okay. How, do you offer that or you just don't want to get into managing all of, all of what that would entail? Like shipping everything framed, it would just add too much cost. Uh, yeah. And, um, in time yeah so especially for the prints there um, because it's uh, like a uh, more affordable way to own, own the art I think it's just uh, maybe you can just find a frame that you like for the print and for the originals as well because I, I sell a lot of drawings online um, usually for those I think people also want to choose their own frames so yeah. And yeah, it's, it's more expensive to ship and it can okay. get damaged if it has glass or something. So, and uh, maybe uh, a tip for that is to do standard sizes. So when I do original drawings, like small drawings, they're always eight by 10 inches. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's always a, like, we have a different standard here, like in Europe. Uh, but I found that the eight by 10 is kind of universal so it kind of fits it's it's a standard size in the u.s and kind of a standard size here as well so that's what i chose yeah yeah so how do you um print them your prints uh, i use my own printer okay so and yeah. just a, a good quality printer and that's good enough yeah it's good enough for, for is your prints. the canon print the canon do you use the same printer and scanner? Like, is it together? Your Canon scanner is yeah. also, yeah, okay. And and so um, what kind of paper are you printing your prints on? Uh, it's uh, like a thick, uh, glossy uh, photo paper. Uh, it's by Canon as well. Okay. So I find it to be pretty good. It's, um, 
because it has the glossy surface, it kind of fits for my art because uh, the original paintings are also like glossy. So I thought that the photo photo paper would be best for my art, but it depends on like what kind of art you do, like what kind of paper you should choose. Right. You can even most... choose like a watercolor paper to print for our own if you want. For the online orders, you mentioned like the US has a different standard size than in Europe, but are you, does that mean you're, most of your online purchases happen from US or do you all, or is it just a mix? Uh, they do, most of the orders come from the US and um, some come from Europe, but mostly from the US because uh, I checked my Instagram, like I have the largest following in Los Angeles. <laughs> I don't know how oh. specific those, those uh, statistics are, but I just had Los Angeles was first and then it was New York and then uh, Helsinki, which is here in Finland. <laughs> so, well, I mean, like, those are two pretty big art, artsy areas yeah, of the yeah, United oh States. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, this has been super helpful. And um, I, you know, as you know, we love what you do. Uh, we admire your uh, dedication and your persistence and perseverance over years of growing your brand. Um, and as we all know, it's, not easy uh, and, and we were just actually talking about this yesterday and then the podcast the previous day i think it was the copy break we were saying that on the one hand it's easier to get your work out in the world than ever before from the standpoint of the resources it's available the tools creating websites printing shipping and all of that and um and on the other hand it's harder because there's so many more people doing it that it's a, a more crowded marketplace um yeah. so what tips would you have for any new uh, artists starting out, even including those who may not have even decided whether they want to get into selling art online and trying that? Um, like, are you selling from your Facebook? What are some of the tips, top tips for anyone starting out that you might offer? Uh, well, one tip I would say is that uh, you should just uh, start sharing your art and uh, like even for me, like I've been drawing and painting all my life, but I've just been doing this, uh, like seriously trying to make this work for five years. And I kind of think that it's slowly starting to work. <laughs> it's a, so don't get discouraged if it takes a lot of time for like, I've been trying to do this for five years with sometimes with more success and sometimes with less. So just keep doing it. <laughs> and um, I think uh, like for me, uh, social media platforms have been really good. Uh, Instagram, I think, is the best for art. And then, but Facebook is also great. So when you say Instagram is good for art, I mean, of course, Instagram is a highly visual medium. Um, mm -hmm. So is that, when you say it's been great, has it been great for growing a following? Um, or has it also been great for selling your art? Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, the gallery that I worked with, uh, they found me on Instagram. And uh, I, I do sell originals when I post them on Instagram and I also sell prints and stuff. So, um, and uh, growing a following is, a, uh, it's a good thing to try to focus on that a little bit, even though, uh, even though you don't have a huge following doesn't mean that you can't sell because I already sell art and I don't have like uh, tens of thousands. I, I have like maybe five or 5,000, 6,000 somewhere around there at the moment, but I'm trying to get it to 10,000 10, because when you have 10,000, you can do uh, from your Instagram stories, you can do direct links to your website. So mm -hmm. if you're selling, like for example, a print, you can just, uh, I think this is how it works. You can just do like swipe up and then you can go to the, to the website to buy it. So yeah, yeah. that's what I, want to do and uh that's what i'm trying to uh, on, in instagram. on instagram and for other tips for artists uh selling on their on that platform have you noticed that uh, do you do you go deep into tracking like exactly where your sales come from so you know what to spend the most time on it's and the follow-up question to that is when you notice uh 
when you get engagement on Instagram, do a lot of the opportunities come out of people just discovering you, finding your work, and then saying, hey, how can I work with you? Or do you also notice like your website stats where people are clicking your link from Instagram and then buying prints? Do you, do you know? Um, I do get a boost on my website visits when I um, post something <clears throat> like that people want to engage with on Instagram. And uh, uh, I haven't really looked uh, a lot of, of, of at the analytics, but um, I want to do more of that. What I've been actually focusing on right now is kind of like to use the right hashtags because mm-hmm. um, what I've uh, it was kind of like a mistake that I did previously is that I tagged all the art hashtags, but actually the, um, I think a lot of artists do this mistake. They try to kind of like get the attention of other artists and it's very hard to sell art to other artists. artists. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, and so. I just realized I was using like hashtags like uh, art and uh, graphite art and like people who want to buy art are in specifically maybe following those hashtags. So what I would recommend and what I've been starting to do is that uh, use more specific um, hashtags. Like if you're doing, for example, like if you're doing like Halloween art, there are people who love Halloween art. So maybe hashtag Halloween art or Halloween aesthetic or uh, uh, spooky drawing or something like that. Like try to be a bit more creative with the hashtags. So That's a great point. Yeah. So lo- being more conscious of what a viewer and potential buyer would be looking into and interested in, as opposed to what other artists kind of just think that they want to put their art yeah. under. And yeah. one podcast I got the tip about the hashtags is that try to use, um, don't use the, the ones that have like a million people because when you when you search the hashtag you can kind of to see like how many people have used that uh don't use the one that ha- that has like millions of people use yeah. those that have like maybe um a couple of thousand and maybe like uh ten thousand and use a maybe a few like hundred thousand so try to keep the number smaller so you can um that's a better way because if you go and search the hashtag there's a good chance that you will be the top post on that specific hashtag if it like only has like 10,000 uh, followers or stuff. So that's, that's yeah. a great tip. In fact, it's very much the same uh, with Google ranking organically for your site. Um, and that is what's it's called long tail keywords. So you use the long tail keywords that the bigger accounts are not as worried about ranking for, and you have a better chance of ranking. So also, to all in our audience, please be sure to go to Ava's page on Instagram. It's Ava Nikunen, all one word, and follow her to help her get to 10,000. Uh, we look forward to that when that happens. Um, and relative to your website, so your website is actually ranking for fantasy art, which gets 18,000 Google searches a month a month but it's not on page one so after we get off this call we'll give you a few ideas on some um, keywords that you can write to that will help you move your site up in ranking for that huge keyword as well oh okay i don't want to i don't want to give it away on the on the call just yet (laughs) because we want to give you a head start on that one (laughs) but let's see what i was um oh Oh, the challenge yeah the the changeling yeah yeah so you, we forgot to ask you about this. Um, you did a, you participated in uh, an incredible group or collaborative pro- project, kind of like an anthology of artists creating a deck of playing cards. I think it was hosted by the Changeling Artist. Yeah, I'm part of an artist collective called the Changeling Artist Collective. Um, they do a Facebook or auction of original art every month on Facebook. And uh, we did a card deck. Uh, last year and through Kickstarter and yeah it was really exciting like all the artists did two cards for the deck and it's really beautiful I'm actually waiting for my my deck it's in the mail so I should be receiving it in maybe hopefully next week so I can see it for myself <laughs> and awesome. we'll link to it I'm, I'm pretty sure it's available on is it available on Amazon yet do you know um, it's um, 
it's a smaller run. I'm not sure if, if they're going to put it on Amazon. It's uh, um, was for sale through through only through the Kickstarter, and uh, they might still have some extra decks. But it was kind of like a limited run. So if you wanted one, you could you kind of had to participate in the Kickstarter. So uh, I can't really give specifics about that at the moment. Okay. Um, how you've been involved with this group is changeling i think it's called for a little while now how has that helped your own brand growth and i'm sure you'd recommend artists find different groups like that right to help them in establishing not only a support network of other artists which i'm sure that happens when you're surrounded in a group like that but how has that helped your brand growth uh yeah it's a good thing to uh to join artists groups like that because uh, it does boost boost your uh, people see you there and can easily find you because they're already coming there to see the art other artists so they might uh, discover you there as well and uh, uh, like I said they do the, the monthly auction I haven't been able to participate in every auction just because I, I haven't had time <laughs> I would really like to participate more, but, and that's something that I'm planning to do a bit more in the future, but I think it's a good thing. And also you can see what other artists were in the same place as you are, like what they're doing and you get a lot of ideas from, from other artists as well. Are awesome. you able to share if the artists who contribute cards to the card deck, for instance, actually receive um, compensation or and or profit sharing, or is it um, just more for the recognition of participation? If you're able to share that, uh, yeah. Well, it wasn't uh, like none of the art artists uh, we didn't get paid to to do the art. So what you could do, like what I did, I sold the original paintings, and that like that was what that were for that project. And uh, we were thinking about like, if there's like extra money left be after the campaign that would be distributed to the artists, but uh, because of some um, uh, extra costs with the printing, that was impossible, but none of us really uh, uh, expected this to be like a, <laughs> uh, like a regular job. We just wanted to, to make the deck a reality and kind of that was the point of the whole Kickstarter that's I'm I'm glad you shared that and that because it's such an important point in a number mm -hmm. of um, for a number of reasons one is um, anyone starting out you know as we've all learned it, it we have to expect to, to do a lot of things for free uh, for a period of time in order to get recognition and to grow our following it's like the mistake tuition or not as obviously it wasn't a mistake but just the learning tuition yeah That's exactly. a better, the learning tuition yeah, the tuition <laughs> the tuition of doing business so we can do business free on facebook but the tuition uh, for that to get wider exposure is to pay for some ads um if we want recognition or we can get exposure in someone's card deck or uh, auction but part of the uh, the cost of that instead of having to pay a membership fee or a show exhibit fee it is the cost of doing the art and contributing mm -hmm. um so and there are and and we've the other reason it's helpful for us is because we have aspirations to become more of a platform to help artists sell there and get recognition and you know basically support artists in much the way the changeling group is doing as well as the creative live group they're offering courses and that's not really probably where we're going to go it's more like here's you know here's some if you need a course here's a course if you need uh to learn how to sell your art here's how to sell your art or if you want to collaborate so for us it would be more like collaborating with journals so right now we might use art that we get for free on pixabay or unsplash um, or that our graphic artist uh, in the Philippines creates for us very inexpensively, but our aspiration is to be able to collaborate with uh, artists in our community um, to create things that bring attention to them and eventually to pay them for it as well. So it's not just that they're getting exposure, but that we're able to, and similarly to help with um, um, networking like artists and writers, uh, children's book who want illustrators or fantasy writers who want illustrators just to become sort of that resource where people can connect with each other uh, and form those relationships. But 
like the community and collaboration aspect of yeah. being a creator. Yeah. So I think that for us, the journey has been as for you and in our audience, um, whether you're a visual artist or an author, a writer aspiring to be an author, um, to not expect that you're going to be making money at it to support yeah. you for quite some time that it's really about, which is why it is so important, as you said earlier, Ava, to build, you know, start, create a Facebook page and start sharing your work just to begin to grow your following so that when the time comes that you have a body of work and you're ready to start selling, you'll have that option. And we were following you back when, before you even fully had, I think your website established, or maybe you had a simple blog or something, but I don't even remember if you had a website yet, but you were sharing like every day you'd have a post in like the afternoon, afternoon our time. Um, and it was just that consistent building over time of showing up, doing your drawing in the morning, sharing it on social media in the evening, working on your business, you know, and, and that's really what it takes. Yeah, I just, uh, because I was actually uh, at a convention talking to um, an aspiring artist. Uh, they just, they were saying to me that um, they weren't sharing their art because it wasn't good enough. <laughs> But it's like, you just have to start sharing because like anything you do, like anything I did five years ago, I'm not happy with that. I just, I'm, I'm still not happy when I like, maybe like one drawing of like 20 is kind of like, okay for me. <laughs> so just uh, don't let that stop you. Just um, share and um, uh, in, in selling art, the the most important thing I think is the the story behind the art. It's mm. not the, like, is it like the like the best ink drawing in the world or best mm. uh, oil painting? It's more of the the story and uh, just being true to to the things that you love and that you want to express through the art. And I think that's the most important thing. That's Beautiful. such a great point. Yeah, yes. we've, we've been talking about that a lot lately of just incorporating the story of your creativity and creation and what you're doing and who you are because people love seeing that. I mean, it's fun to go through an artist's feed and scroll back and see sort of their evolution in a sort of speed scroll of how they've evolved their creations. Yeah, or their YouTube channel. And I think, so for you, I mean, your, your creations are so exquisite to... Uh, anyone I think that views them so we would never even imagine as you might that you're not satisfied with it but it's really the you know you're speaking about the heart of a true craftsman or craftswoman artisan you know with just your thing is not about making a lot quickly but to make it beautifully and perfectly um, and yet you've also you know been at the place of thinking that you needed to increase the number of art pieces that you have increase your the volume of work in the world so with your perfectionism around <laughs> you know your vision that you want to bring to life understandably have you been able to speed up your process even with that uh yeah a little bit that that's the thing that i still struggle with is that um uh, um uh, that is, it slows me down when I uh, try to make the painting perfect. And uh, uh, and is of course, it's never going to be perfect, but just to get it to that level where I'm like satisfied with it, because I always know that next year I will be a little bit better when I have more experience and stuff. So yeah, um, that's the thing. Yeah, I still struggle with that, but I'm always trying to, to get better <laughs> just... Um, um, be a little bit faster because I still um, uh, I want to grow uh, like the inventory I have on my website and do more prints and stuff and that means that I have to have more paintings and yeah but I, I'm, I'm working on that every day yeah but I would suppose I would uh, assume that some of the work you've been doing with your journals and coloring books even speeds up some of that process as well because you don't you don't have to paint those and so you can have income coming in from a product that's already been created and established and you're able to sell that to to bring in some income while you then are able to take the time to grow your art your oil painting inventory which does take longer just because of the nature of the medium as well yeah that was actually the the initial inspiration behind uh the enchanted valley journal that i did because I, I could do uh, 
graphite drawings quite quickly. And it's a medium that I'm very uh, comfortable with. Hmm. So my, uh, my idea was like, how can I use these uh, graphite drawings that I do in a product? <laughs> so that was the, that's how I came up with a journal. Like I could illustrate a book quite fast. And, uh, uh, and I thought, because I always like to, I like the, the products that I make, I like them to be useful for people. At some point I might do like a, maybe like a sketchbook where you can just uh, see drawings of my art. But at this point, um, I like the idea more of like journals where people can write and uh, coloring books that people use to color. So uh, just uh, uh, products that have some meaning. So there is not just another, another book that's gonna sit on your shelf and you look at it once and never look at it again. So yeah, that right. was the whole process. Right. When speaking of that, so one other question on, you mentioned the story and the importance of story. We've been talking about that, as Devani said re recently, relative on, from two angles. One is the angle of what is the story of this creation? In other words, like, if, like the uh, autumn princess, um, you know, what is her story? Or, and or, what is the story of the artist who created autumn mm -hmm. princess in what was her thought process which uh direction do you tend to go and do you have a favorite between the two um my art is very much based on the on the characters uh it's not really about me <laughs> it's mm -hmm. more about like uh because i i do more like illustration based art it's uh these are like victorian themes so um always Try, like try to take back seat with yeah, that and lovely. just start, well, and you do uh, it story. so well yes. um so remember that your art that is just okay to everyone else is perfect <laughs> <laughs> it is yes. it is truly incredible art talking and we're to have a conversation yeah. <laughs> good talking with you and again thank you so much for yes. sharing i mean you know you're five years going on six years into this journey and you know how hard it has been and yet how rewarding and you wouldn't you wouldn't not do it and um, you've amassed so, so much knowledge around not only your own art process but just around creating a product creating several products yeah. the process just your systems are just to share and help people in the beginning stage now yeah. that's awesome yeah so thank you and we look forward to what's next uh and to your your public the publishing of your next coloring book as well as seeing your instagram get to 10k yes yeah. <laughs> go follow cool. Ava Nikunen on instagram guys and we will post all the links in this episode so okay. all right bye bye, bye. Thanks so much for joining us for the I Create Daily podcast. Please let us know what creatives you would like us to interview and what topics you would be interested in hearing more about. And if you enjoyed this show, please leave a review on iTunes. We value your feedback. We read all the reviews and it just helps us get the word out on the I Create Daily podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.